welcome to Cam's Couch. This is episode two. <laughs> um, and tonight we reviewed and watched a show on MTV at 10 p.m. So that's Mondays at 10 p.m. And it was called The Hard Times of R.J. Berger. Uh, okay. <laughs> so definitely pinpointed the high school dramedy. Um, that's definitely what it is uh, with a lot of physical comedy. One of the first lines is, what's up with the low hand glasses, which right off the bat just get went, oh, yep, yeah, high school dramedy. This is going to be really, really, uh, really interesting, I think, and just uh, where it's going to go. So the story's about RJ Berger, who initially I thought was a girl, and I had seen her, and I was like, that girl was being made fun of for being ugly and not cute, and she's actually really insanely cute and has like, what, one zit. Um, and her friends, make glasses over here, and Piggy from uh, Lord of the Flies. Uh, and I just was like, well, don't understand. Um, but then I realized R.J. Berger was actually the guy with the glasses. Uh, so that kind of caught me off guard a bit, because I definitely thought it had been a girl. And all the previews, I had assumed that it had been this girl. Um, but this particular storyline happens, happens to take place... Um, surrounding R.J. Berger um, and the guy, but there's a couple other female characters, girl characters, that uh, seem to be much more dominant in the episode, and I'm not sure if that's for the whole show, but it definitely didn't necessarily seem like the hard times of R.J. Berger. It didn't seem like his life was uh, that difficult. They use a lot of language that I was unaware of that they, that they use on MTV. I guess it makes sense. I mean, you hear it on regular... Uh, television anyway. Um, but they use the, the words bitch and douchebag uh, a couple times. I think ass was in there, but I'm not sure. Um, so that was definitely a little different. I was like, oh, to hear high school age kids saying that and calling each other those names in a show is interesting. Because, um, you know, I was more used to something like Seventh Heaven where that dialogue wasn't a part of the show. Anyway, uh, there's a character on it called Lily. And I just... Uh, She's a fucking joke, right? Like, <laughs> I thought she had to be completely, uh, just not for real. Like, it, it had to, and I just actually described her in my little notes, I described her as fugly. Um, and later in the show, they used the word fugly, and I went, oh no, that's unfortunate. She was wearing something, like, made out of bird feathers on her shoulders, and she's walking around in a cane. Um, and I get it, but it's just the way she does it is just... Uh, it's not something you connect with very well. It's her character is just over the top, and I mean, bottom line, whoever the girl is that plays Lily, I define her as pretty much horrendous actress. Like I just I couldn't get over her teeth and her mouth and the way that she did anything really. Um, so she was a huge downer for the show. I, I understand where the character is going, and she's you know this uh, fugly kid who becomes popular because she has money in this particular episode or whatever, but just her as a character, her as an actress, just uh, was absolutely horrendous. Um, and they should fire her <laughs> and bring someone else on the show. It just wasn't there. It just wasn't there. The hot girl who I initially thought was R.J. Berger, uh, her name's Jenny, um, and at some point she was covered in zits. That's what this whole premise is about, is about her having zits and not being able to show her face and how it's going to affect her popularity and all this bullshit. Um, but it, it looks like chicken pox. It didn't really look like zits, so wardrobe makeup's not totally on point. But again, I guess it is an MTV show at 10 p.m. And I'm not really sure who's going to be watching this at Monday night at 10 p.m. Her face looked like a two-year-old with chicken pox, so that was a, a little disappointing. Um, like I said before, I mean, there's a lot of physical humor. Um, there's a time when a guy walks out of the bathroom, he's got a toilet seat cover in his pants. Ooh, hysterical. You know. And the show ended with a line that I feel they use frequently, but I don't know because I haven't seen the show before. Um, and the line is, I'm R.J. Berger, uh, and ugly is as ugly does. And I'm just like, wow, what a, what a moral boost. What a, what a, what a great thing for this dorky looking kid in glasses. He's actually kind of cute. I mean, he's just, he's just like your skinny average nerdy dorky looking kid with glasses. And, and, and wavy, thick, uh, you know, if not curly hair. Um, and it was just really kind of almost disappointing <laughs> that that's the premise of the show is this kid that has 
a friend, a, a love interest, it seems like, who's a girl who's uh, the hot cheerleader who apparently has some zits, and he's friends with this really fat kid, uh, the boy that I described as Piggy from Lord of the Flies. He also, I mean, flamboyantly, he's very flamboyant. I'm not going to say he's gay, but definitely seems that way, and it just... The, the characters are very, very stereotypical, and I, I guess I could describe them as very MTV. I'm used to MTV at least, I don't know, at least being a little bit more interesting or enthralling than that. Overall, it was just like, maybe it was because I had watched, you know, a huge marathon on sci-fi all day long and had seen, watched Being, uh, being Human, which was um, episode one. Um, but I cannot wait for this episode to be over of The Hard Times of R.J. Berger. It's only half an hour long, and I was looking forward to commercial breaks. I was, uh, I actually noticed that during the commercials they started doing a lot of previews for Dylan Dog, a preview that absolutely did not spark my interest at all of something I'd want to see. Um, but it was so, overall it was pretty disappointing. I mean, it's disappointing to sit there and spend time trying to watch something and you're just not interested at all. Um, but that's what I'm doing is I'm staying committed to actually watching the full show and figuring out what it's all about. Um, so I would say all in all, uh, Hard Times of R.J. Berger, not something I'd set your alarm clocks for to uh, try and watch. Uh, I guess middle school age kids, maybe some high school kids maybe uh, would like it. I doubt there's very many kids in college that are getting into that, that show. And I mean, even in middle school, it... For middle school kids, it definitely portrays a image of high school that, um, I, extreme images of high school and extreme characters, um, from high school, which I guess is to be expected, but still rather disappointing and kind of, uh, meh to watch. I mean, meh. Overall, I'd give it, uh, I want to give it like three quarters of a star, but, um, I'm limiting myself. So no, I'll, screw that. It's Cam's couch. I can do what I want. Um, I'd give it three quarters of a star <laughs> of a single star, so definitely not something I I would care to see again. Fire some of those actresses. The girl that plays Lily, something, change something. It was just, that was horrendous. It was actually a horrendous thing. I'd, I'd rather watch House Hunters International. <laughs>